Hello and welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. I put a post up on my community posts last week talking about uh, passing on a Charter Arms Pathfinder that I saw at a local shop. And it was because it was in kind of rough shape. It looked like it had a bunch of damage to the cylinder from people dry firing it and I decided not to buy it. Well, I went back to the shop a couple days later after thinking about it and doing a bunch of searching online and I realized that the particular model that I looked at was not one that I could purchase brand new, so I had to buy one that was already traded into a shop because they're not on the quote-unquote approved roster in my state. So the price on it was too good for me to pass up, so I went back and looked at it again, looked it over really closely, tried to make an offer for a lower price, and they said no. So I ended up buying it anyway. It was under $300, and it was in nice enough shape after looking at it again that I, I figured it was worth taking a, a chance on it. So this is that gun, and part of the reason I did not want to buy it, if you look very closely at the cylinders here, each one of the cylinders, or the chambers in the cylinders, there is a dent in the chambers. And that's from somebody dry firing this pistol many, many, many times. The firing pins in these are made out of, I think, beryllium, which is much harder than steel. And this is a late 2000s model, so it's not necessarily when they were in their best production. I like the older ones better. I've said that many times. But this particular one... The Snub Nose 22 in a six-shot variant, again, they're not available. They're not even available at all right now. All of these come with an eight-shot cylinder right now, which are okay. It's the same thing as the Target Pathfinder I have. But this one's a little bit unique. Uh, there's not a lot of these for sale around me. The Snub Nose 22s don't come up very often at all. Um, but as I bought it, uh, the, one of the main reasons I bought it is because I did a bunch of searching online and I found a parts kit that had a complete frame, a cylinder, a hammer, a trigger, and a whole bunch of other stuff for a very reasonable price. And you can see this one has the groove trigger on it, although this one is not really grippy. It's actually kind of smooth feeling as it is, but it has the grooves in the trigger. And um, again, with the cylinder being all beat up, and originally I thought that these shiny marks on the the ejector star were from somebody grinding it after the fact. The more I look at it, I think that's actually done at the factory. The other thing I thought was kind of weird about this, if you look at the front sight, it's actually ground really short. And again, I, I thought somebody originally did that, but the more I looked at it when I went back the second time, I could tell that that's actually done at the factory. The finish on it is the same as the rest of the barrel and the frame and everything else on it. But this being a pretty late production model gun. It has a plastic grip frame on it. Still comes with these really ugly rubber grips. And again, the cylinder being a little bit damaged. So me being myself, I had a set of nice wood grips that I took off of an undercover. I found a parts kit with a cylinder that has no dents in it whatsoever off of the same vintage model. And the challenge with getting a replacement cylinder for this is the new, the older ones, the cylinder was actually shorter and the forcing cone on the barrel was longer. So I had to find one from this same generation that I could replace it with. This is pretty much exactly the same uh, cylinder, the same crane and everything else. So I'm going to do a little bit of magic of editing because I can't do any work on guns on videos or YouTube will demonetize the video. So let me do a little bit of creative editing and I'll show you what it's going to look like after I swap the parts out. Well, I'm more than halfway done the swap over. You can see the frame that's on this now. It actually has some black paint on it. This was actually a black anodized frame that I sanded as much of the uh, paint and the anodization off it as I could. I like swapping these out from the factory ones. This is, oops. This is the factory frame. You can see the uh, mold marks on it. These are actually made out of polymer. And for what they are, for a 22 or the Ultralight 38 Specials that they put these on, they're okay. I mean, they're strong enough, but I don't like them particularly. So I put an aluminum frame on this and I was able to swap the cylinder over. Now, when I test fire these things, I put these uh, drywall anchors in them. If I don't have actual 
snap caps and the drywall anchors work just fine. Now the funny thing was I tested the lockup on this before with the old cylinder, basically by cocking the hammer, pulling the trigger part way down, holding the hammer and then looking down the barrel. And when I was doing that with the old one, the cylinders were actually, uh, or the chambers in the cylinder were actually offset a little bit. So I guarantee this gun before when somebody shot it, it was shaving lead off the bullets as they went down the barrel because the cylinder was actually turned just to the side. I could actually see the edge of the chamber and the cylinders when it was in lockup. So I guarantee somebody traded this thing in because it had issues with shaving lead or possibly with uh, the timing being out. But now putting this new cylinder on there, when I test the lockup on this thing, not only it's pretty tight, but now the cylinders and the chambers are actually lined up with the bore on the barrel. So it's ironic that buying a gun from the factory, the cylinder that it came with was out of time, but replacing it with one from another um, revolver that wasn't even fit to this frame, it's back in time and it works perfectly fine. So pretty interesting on that note. I just figured I wanted to show it with the aluminum frame on here and it looks, you know, like it's like polished aluminum. I just used some, I don't know, 180, 200 grit sandpaper. So it's a little bit rough, but I didn't want it to be super shiny anyway. And I got the new cylinder in. I was going to change the trigger because the trigger that came with the parts kit I bought is the smooth shoe style trigger. And I like these better, especially for target shooting because your finger slips a little bit easier. Um, the ones that have the grooves in them, they're meant to hold your finger in place so it doesn't rotate back and forth, but they kind of bite into your finger a little bit once in a while. Eventually I may put this trigger in, but for now I'm not going to. So let me go ahead and put these wood grips on and I'll come back in a minute. And here you have it now in its semi-finished format. Again, I got the drywall anchors in the cylinder, and it feels pretty good. Trigger's probably, I don't know, four, four and a half pounds in single action, maybe a little bit less, and still 11 and a half or 12 pounds in double action, which for a 22 is about what you want. You need something that has enough strength to drop the hammer on that. So now I have... A nice looking little stainless steel 22 snub nose charter arms undercut or charter arms pathfinder rather and um you know i'm always on the lookout for charter arms revolvers this one just kind of happened to fall in my lap and like i said even though i tried talking the guy down a little bit he didn't want to drop even 25 bucks off the price which is all i was asking because he knew Again, these particular models, the Pathfinder snub noses, don't show up very often. They're not on the approved list, so they have to be one that's already in the state that gets traded in for me to find one, or I have to try to find one from out of state, um, but that's not so easy to do. So another Charter Arms to my collection, and probably the last gun that I'm going to buy in 2023. There's only one or two days left in 2023. Well, I should say a week anyway, but... I don't plan on going anywhere and going shopping in the next week. I have a bunch of projects to do on other guns. I got to get back on my kel Sub-2000 because I was able to find some additional parts for that guy. And some other stuff with some shotguns I have. And now I have some more parts that I can resell. So I've had pretty good luck selling these grips and these frames on eBay. So I'm going to go ahead and throw them up and I'll probably make all the money back that I spent on the kit for this. I think I spent like $28 or $30 on the entire parts kit for the cylinder, the frame, the grip, the trigger, the hammer, and a whole bunch of screws and stuff. So I'll make my money back on that, no problem. So thanks again for watching another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews and another Charter Arms Pathfinder 22, another Charter Arms revolver for that matter in my collection. Something that I'd be happy to take out and shoot very soon when I get back out to the range. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. God bless America. Support your 2A rights. Get out there and shoot. And you remember if somebody tells you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good, that freedom is the greater good.